Hello, Pod Smashers of the Internet, and welcome to another 80 bit newscast. I don't know what, what, what is all that. We are your hosts. Penguin and Termite, I am Penguin. I am Termite, and this is your weekly video game news show where we run through the week's gaming news and tidbits that we care about. And you can follow along, you can let us know if we are wrong, give us corrections, heckle us, troll us, whatever you'd like. Throw it in chat, and we will answer your questions at the end of our show, so expect us to wait until then. Or you can hold your questions until the last five minutes or so when we say, and you can drop your questions in chat, and we will get to them. That's right, and we are only a 30-minute show, so we're going to be hitting the news stories that we care the most about um, between the two of us, mostly the term I cares about. <laughs> I do put it together. And, uh, <laughs> and then we are going to give you our hot takes and thoughts on them as well. So you're not just getting, like, a BBC Associated Press news report. You're getting, like, a CNN... Uh, you know, punditry, kind of. Like, we're going to tell you how to feel about things, for the most part. <laughs> so. Neat. And yeah. with that, you can also go, if you really love that, you can go to 80bitpodsmash.com, where we have a weekly video game podcast that goes live every midnight at Monday, where we just released an episode about video game strategy guides and their history and why they're that gone so good. and our love it's for them. It's such a good episode. It's a really good yeah. episode. I and don't always enjoy, like, not... I don't always enjoy our episodes. I don't always, like, you know, say... Like, oh, this last episode was the best way we've ever done. Like, I don't like to do that. That cheapens it. So when I do really enjoy listening to an episode while editing it, I make a point to say, like, it was a good episode. So you should definitely check that one out if you haven't yet. There are links um, to all of our podcast platforms over at 80bitpodsmash.com. So check out Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, all of them. We're there. And make sure you check us all out on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Reddit. We also have a Discord server. The link is in the show notes of all of our episodes. Hit us up there. Interact with our community. And you can find us right here at twitch.tv slash 80bitpodsmash. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, make sure you go over to our Twitch channel and subscribe to us there so you can be live in the action. Wednesday nights, we do a gameplay live stream. We switch between the two of us, and we rotate Mm -hmm. through playing through things. So this week is Penguin's turn. So he. So do you know? I'm pick. I've already picked it. I've your already mic, committed. Your mic just switched. Just letting you know. Did it? Yep. What? Now it hold sounds on. not so great. Yeah. Wait, this is on. live. We're doing it live right now. Uh, is that better? Nope. You still sound like a uh, robot. No. Ah, I'm alone. Scream. Well, I'll go ahead and start off the news. The first. Shut up. Oh, now you're I muted. I did it. I'm here. Now you're delayed. I'm mute. Nope. Now you're not mute. What? It's really, really Am delayed. Okay? Your audio is way off from your mouth. It's like watching a really old, bad anime mm. translation. <laughs> Can I drop the call and join back? It'll flicker with everything, but sure. All right, it's happening. Uh-oh. We're doing this live. Oh, now I'm in the middle. See, there's a bar. Whoop. Now I'm on Penguin side. Now I'm on Termite side. Now I'm on Penguin side. Termite side. Oh, he's coming back. Hey. Back. Hey, everybody. He's back. <laughs> <It's working>. Awesome. <laughs> Everything's uh, great. Okay. Everything's great. What are we going to talk about tonight? Do I sound good? Do I yeah, sound okay? Everything's great. All right. I'll announce what I'm streaming at the end since that's what I was saying. Yes. Um Oh, what am uh what are we talking about tonight? So we have a bunch of new stories we need to cover, so I should stop dallying with technical issues and move on. <laughs> so uh so Nintendo has announced and made an announcement about what they're planning to focus on going forward, which is interesting news to me um (laughs) some news about the comic-con that we had talked about a couple weeks ago uh (laughs) there was an interesting timing announcement with that comic-con and i love that these things are sometimes the first time you have known about them and (laughs) i get your raw reaction like that That sometimes i read them and Mm -hmm. sometimes i read them ahead of time without actually realizing what i'm reading Uh. i'm adhd i'm allowed to be that way i think (laughs) um there's some interesting details from Bioshock 4's development based on some hiring notices that may indicate the direction they're planning to take with the game. Um, Ubisoft has revealed some plans uh, related to a major event coming up. The uh, there's We just had a really big update to PS5, so we'll talk about what, went, what we got from that, um, from the UI. And uh, some more PlayStation 5 news about how well it's selling. And then finally, there was another Resident Evil showcase, so we'll talk about what was all going on in that. So those are our news stories, and I am streaming Subnautica. 
on Ooh, Wednesday. Ooh, that sounds exciting. I've got a friend who's been harassing me about it forever. And awesome. So just like Bloodborne, I was like, fine. He's been harassing me about it. I will try it. And who knows? Maybe I'll get hooked. I know Gamer Time, friend of our show. He loves it too. He was all about it. A lot of people love it. And then the new one's coming out, Sub Zero or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that'll be. If I like it, who knows? Maybe I'll you get some didn't press F5 because I have a news story that's at the very top that broke today. It was the biggest oh, yeah. gaming news that <laughs> this year yet. That is, I am the most excited about it. So I'm going to go for it. Sony listened to its fans. The PlayStation mm-hmm. 3 and PlayStation Vita stores are not going to be closed. They're going to keep them open. So, by way of The Verge, Chame Gardenberg, go give them the link. Sony has announced that it will be keeping its PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita digital storefront open for the foreseeable future. PSP store will still be shut down July 2nd as originally planned. Upon further reflection, however, it's clear that we made the wrong decision here. So today, I'm happy to say that we will be keeping the PlayStation Store operational for PS3 and PS Vita devices. PSP commerce functionality will retire on July 2nd. As planned, Sony Interactive President and CEO Jim Ryan announced in a blog post, Sony had originally planned announced that the digital storefronts for its legacy consoles would be shut down at the end of March. Okay, they were going to be shut down in the summer, but they announced it at the end of March. Uh, Following that announcement, though, the backlash from PS3 and Vita owners upset that they would no longer be able to buy new games. It seems that Sony has relented and will be keeping those stores open indefinitely. Yes! I'm so excited. Interesting note to talk about here is that the PSP storefront in the app might be shutting down, but those PSP digital titles are still available through backwards compatibility on the Vita. So there are right. the whole library of PSP games that you can purchase. You can get them on the Vita still. You just have to have a Vita and you can get yeah. them through that storefront. So they're not losing games. The games are not going away into the ether. This is a major big deal for the preservation and archiving of video games because those games yeah. would be gone forever. I'm so, so freaking excited. I cannot wait. It's really uh, rare really to, to be, see, a, but yeah, go ahead. yeah, no, I was just gonna say it's really rare for a company like Sony to just straight up say we were wrong, we made the wrong call. So very rare. Yeah, very. Uh, it's rare. funny because both them and Microsoft didn't Microsoft do that recently with the price hike too, yep. or they were just like it was the wrong call. We admit it. We yeah. get it. <laughs> I mean, Reddit <laughs> was received. lit lit up. I mean, like mega threads out the wazoo yeah. because I'm oh, 34 years old and say wazoo. Yeah. But, Yes, <laughs> it was definitely a very, very, very hot button issue for for gamers, and just kind of revealed the kind of anti consumer true colors going on behind the scenes. Uh, and so whenever whenever stuff like that happens, I mean, I just it's it's fascinating to me just because I'm so used to the complaints falling on deaf ears, but when they're loud enough, they make they make a difference. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, good on Sony, good on Sony and PSP and PS3 fans. Um, for kind of calling out that that <laughs> for what it was and it literally making them 180 on that decision. So, And the last uh, bit before we move on, this is like bad news after bad news and a string of things. Jason Schreier posted his article about Sony's turn to focusing so much on AAA blockbusters and that whole expose was another negative light and another blow to this one. This news had dropped that the stores were closing through like a third party mm-hmm. leak. Like they didn't even come out front with it which shows how much they cared or didn't about these stores. And so like yeah. Sony actually listening and turning a, like turning a corner maybe uh, who knows but it comes great there's finally good news from the sony front in a sea of bad news so yeah yep. for sure cool awesome so moving along nintendo is announcing that or announced that they are going to be focusing on new ips original ips which Ooh. is crazy we just had a conversation about this and nintendo is known for kind of relying on their bread and butter ips that they have for the last several decades. So what new things could Nintendo be coming out with? That's really, really intriguing. Yeah, gamesindustry.biz's writer Marie DeLisandri writes, President Shintaro Furukawa said in an interview with Nike, which is translated by the VGC, that creating new series and development, developing new entries in well-known Nintendo IPs is what the Switch needs to remain competitive. Quote, with an expansion of time spent at home, the range of entertainment as an object of consumption is expanding, he said. Games are not ne- not a necessity of life. In order for customers to choose games in their finite time, they have to be interesting. Competition is tough, mm-hmm. and I am not optimistic. 
That's what he said. I am myself yeah. looking. Uh, I am my, I myself am looking at and studying various forms of entertainment. In the future, we will focus on creating new game series as well as long sellers such as Mario and Zelda. We are. Yeah, they're never gonna stop their their lucrative IPs. Oh, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like that's I would never expect that from Nintendo. But the fact that they said they're going to put an emphasis on creating new series is still also promising. We are constantly building up ideas for the new consoles the market is expecting, but there are some things we can't do now due to technology and cost constraints. Funny he mentions that. That's the end of the quotes here from GamesIndustry.biz regarding his interview. But it is interesting that he highlights we're going to make new IP and we're facing constraints on limited hardware capacity based in the competition. So Mm -hmm. come on, Nintendo. Let's go. E3 is going to be lit. Switch Pro, <laughs> new IP, yeah. Metroid, Zelda Breath of Wild oh, 2, man. E3 is oh, going to be so good. Man. Yeah, they really need to invest in a more power. I do think that they're going to need to invest in, uh, consider at least considering more powerful console options, just because I think what, I, I can't say this for sure, but I can say Nintendo should be looking at Sony and say, seeing what Sony's done with the architecture of, the solid state drive and the new experiences that they're poised to create as a result of that like rift apart hopefully is the kind of game that nintendo looks at and goes we can make something like that Mm -hmm. (laughs) we should be making something like that um and yeah i don't know what that yeah i I, i'm bringing forward that train of thought whether or not it's actually what nintendo is even interested in competing in but i think to myself i'm like that is probably the best area where sony has innovated um and where we're going to see cool, unique experiences that, again, Nintendo should be at the forefront of. Um, so can you imagine Breath of the Wild running on, like, an SSD? Can you mm-hmm. imagine? Well, like, the Switch already has kind of an internal SSD I know, already. I but know, it's not... but, like, the low... yeah. imagine Zelda with no load times. Imagine Or imagine Breath of the Wild with no load times is what I'm yeah. going at here. Like, mm-hmm. like, and I don't mean just, like, a like a fast load time. I don't, I don't even mean, like, a, like a Demon Souls speed, like, four-second load time. I mean, literally... All the dungeons are built into and integrated into the open, like the the, the open world. Like, if, if, awesome. a, if a Zelda game, if a Zelda game was on the PlayStation Five hardware, it could do it. But it like, so Switch needs to invest in something like that. It doesn't have to be even. I don't even care if it's four K, sixty frames per second. Like, I want. I'd be happy with sixty frames per second. But like, give me like super fast loading times or none at all mm-hmm. like oh that's what i want i want that architecture built into the switch somehow it seems like so. that's where everybody's going pcs xboxes nintendo uh, nintendo's falling behind but everywhere else yeah, has, they are. even tablets really are. and like other devices phones and such mm-hmm. have very fast internal storage so come mm-hmm. on nintendo let's go let's do it get it get catch it. up get it <laughs> all right next story is of uh, so comic-con was scheduled for the context here is comic-con was scheduled for thanksgiving weekend the, literally the friday after thanksgiving would be the first day of san diego comic-con and we talked about how much of a faux pas that was and um, then they dug their yeah. heels in with an explanation tweet that said oh, did they? due to limiting scheduling availability dates for the expo center this was the only date we could get sorry and that's what we're doing like they dug their heels in sorry go ahead that's the well, but apparently not because it's now canceled. <laughs> it is now canceled. Uh, it's it's actually a pretty short story, but uh, there's a really long tweet from the San Diego Comic Con itself from from their Twitter. It's at comic underscore con, so you can go read their whole explanation there. But I'm going to read the snippet from The Verge from Sean Hollister, who says San Diego Comic Con has announced this year's show will not go on, at least not in person, and the 2021 Anime Expo has now officially canceled its physical event event as well that's the second time in 50 years the comic-con has been canceled due to covid 19 there'll be a virtual event from july 23rd to the 25th and organizers are planning a three-day in-person convention tentatively set for november but they're clear that the full shebang has been postponed until 2022 and offering refunds and rollovers as appropriate so it looks like they kept that that november weekend that thanksgiving for like a three-day um in-person thing that's like they've downgraded it essentially it's not the full-blown comic-con anymore it's like a small thing that they're gonna do on the side but yep so there you go comic-con's canceled again after that faux pas so hopefully they can lick their wounds and come back next year with something awesome we'll see it's gonna hurt it's gonna a, a, a company like that that's entire revenue is centered around like a weekend once a year well they have one in new uh, york they have new york comic-con they have a, the one right, in texas too and so right they'll, they'll be fine, right but still san diego that's it's still a big a one yeah it's a big hit it yeah mm-hmm. so crazy all right um 
So Bioshock Four is currently under development by Cloud Studio. Is that Cloud what it's Chamber. Cloud Chamber, mm-hmm. and that is a development studio under Two K Games, mm-hmm. the same overhead publisher that does Borderlands. Um, Cloud Chamber posted for Bioshock. I don't know if it was for Bioshock or not, but Cloud Chamber posted a job. Uh, listing for a developer with experience designing open world systems, right? Is that more or less? Weave impactful character driven stories in an open world setting. Right. So the (laughs) implication there being it's not 100% saying that that's what what the direction they're going, but it is an indication that the game may be going with an open world Mm -hmm. format of some kind or or open, uh, open environmental. Uh, kind of game so that's a a huge departure from bioshock's very on the rails story um for the last three entries so uh what are your thoughts on that chasing that open world money that's everybody's going to the open world it's yet another it's so interesting with bioshock though because like the the on the rails no i'm with you but it's interesting with bioshock because the on the rails we talked about this on the podcast the sort of like yeah on the rails story like uh gameplay is that's the theme like the theme of bioshock has always been you don't have any control you don't have any free will like or it's it's a treatise on like free will versus uh and so like you know giving the fact that like you know you can't just go wherever you want has always been like thematic it's been one of those examples of the theme being woven into Mm -hmm. the gameplay uh and uh so open world kind of undercuts that like you can go wherever you want and do whatever you want it would be interesting to see them i don't know it'll be interesting to see maybe, maybe that's what they're going to do maybe they're going to maybe that's going to be the theme like somehow is sort of a, a sort free. of playing continuing to play with that idea of free will and maybe even if you can go anywhere you want maybe you're still not as free as you think there's so many ways they could go with it so i'm not completely mm-hmm. Saying it's a bad move, I'm just saying it's a huge departure from the from even the thematic elements of the games mm-hmm. thus far. So. I'm, I'm hopeful for Cloud Chamber. I do believe they have some of the developers that worked on the original Bioshock on, in hand in house, and so I don't think mm-hmm. those themes would be twisted and changed too much. Right. It, it's mm-hmm. just it could potentially fall into the trap of yet another Assassin's Creed, yet another Immortals, or you know, list goes on, on and on and on of uh, open world games where we just don't have time to play them all. Watch Dogs. Yeah. And of course, I listed. Well, like, but, and the world has play. to be interesting enough. You know what I mean? Like setting. But when it comes to Bioshock games, setting is probably the single most important. Yep. Thing. It's one of the few games that I can say for sure that setting plays Absolutely. a bigger role than almost anything else. Because mm-hmm. the first game setting was so good, mm-hmm. and then the third game setting was such an interesting departure and twist that it also was good and mm-hmm. and, and quality and there oh, wasn't so there weren't really many there weren't really many there weren't many like there were very few sky games like games that took place in like a sky world in the first place mm-hmm. and at the time when it came out and on top of that there were very few games that had that 19 like 1900s turn of the century i don't think i don't think it's i think it might be the only one that i'm familiar with that that specific time period yeah exactly well, oh, Red Dead Redemption, yeah, 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 for sure. But still, that's Western. This was like yeah. turn of the century, East Coast kind of mm-hmm. like style. So, like again, when you have place and time are what make a setting. So, like place and time of an open world Bioshock game is going to be the single most important thing they do. Yep. And they can't just do Rapture again, right? Because people will that that's not interesting. They can't. They shouldn't do uh, Columbia again. So, like, where are they going to go? What are they going to do? Because it's an open what world other settings world. haven't. What other settings haven't been done though? Like we we have Nazis on the moon. We've got you know games with Nazis on the moon. We've got games that take place in volcanoes. We've got games that take place in space. Like I don't, I could see like a Victorian. I could see maybe like on the moon with like a Victorian England, like you know, kind of setting. But even then, like open world, could you do that? Like mm. I don't know. I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. So it is. Yeah. And may, we'll and the, you know the best part about this is it may not even be an open world at all. That's maybe true. it'll have like open environments or maybe it'll have like open-ended game design that's why they want someone who has experience with that but it may not it may still end up being in small contained environments we don't know because what we're going off of is a job posting <laughs> mm-hmm. that's it that's all we know so we'll see yeah. what happens uh bioshock is sure. incredible if you haven't played it yet the collection is out uh, and it has next gen patch for ps5 so i gotta do uh trophy platinum trophies on those Ugh, i think good luck I gotta get 
my collection. <laughs> yes. It's just like three playthroughs on the hardest difficulty you without know, dying yeah, once. You know, piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we look forward to it. Uh, Hopefully there'll be something at E3. Speaking of E3. Yeah. Uh, Danny Way. Termite Way. Yeah, E3. Greg good way. segue. Segway. <laughs> Ubisoft Forward has announced this comes by way of Polygon, over uh, written by Ryan Gilliam. So Ubisoft Forward will return as part of E3 2021, Ubisoft announced on Thursday. Like last year's event, Ubisoft Forward 2021 will be a digital press briefing and will showcase a variety of upcoming Ubisoft titles. It will stream on Saturday, June 12th at 3 p.m. Eastern. So look out for that. Stuff that they're maybe going to show is stuff like Far Cry 6 and Riders Republic, whatever next for Rainbow Six Siege, Hyperscape, The Division 2, and maybe... Um, Ubisoft's Ma- Ubisoft Massive's new Star Wars title, which was announced in January. Hopefully, we'll see that. Mm-hmm. It'd be awesome. I doubt so. it. <laughs> can't the because the game can't come out until after the until after the exclusivity deal ends, right? I have no idea. Presumably, well, presumably it can't come out. Unless... if the game was announced January, we got like five years to wait. Especially if they were just tasked with it, uh, at exactly. least for a release time. So if that's anything... what I mean. Like it seems timed enough where it would be like, yeah, the game's gonna come out in twenty twenty four or whatever. When after the you know. 10 years have elapsed with ea it almost seems perfectly timed in such a way especially if it's an open world game mm-hmm. but so i can't imagine we'll see it at all maybe we'll get a title that's what i'm maybe thinking we'll yeah. get a title yeah. like, like they did with fallen order where it was like yeah fallen order is the title of the mm-hmm. game <laughs> so yep that's cool look forward to that i know we cool. will be sure. covering e3 in some fashion but we haven't announced our plans yet because we haven't made them so we'll you know stay tuned to us because <laughs> half the plans haven't been made yet it's true. <laughs> or at least announced right. so We'll we'll probably get that squared away like the week before E3. Yep. Well, cool word. All right. Uh, the so the PS5 had a spring update, the first major update to the games or not the games to the system software um, and operating system since the game or since the uh, PlayStation released uh, mm-hmm. in November. So pretty big deal. A lot of changes and also not a lot of changes, <laughs> but um. Let's talk about it. It's a lot and not a lot. But the biggest feature and the thing that it kind of centered around is now you can store, store PS5 games on external storage. You have to copy them from the PlayStation 5, as in you cannot download directly from the internet to the storage device. You have to go into your PlayStation 5 and then copy it to your external drive. And then in order to play them, you have to move them back from your external drive back onto your PlayStation 5 and play them natively. So there's that. Uh, there was a whole bunch of bugs and like problems using external storage devices with PS4 games because you can play them off of the external drive without copying them. Uh, so that has kind of been smoothed out. But that was like the biggest forefront feature from this update. Um, is there anything you want to say about that before we go on to the next the list of, of features? What do you think? It's about fine. That? They we we they really need to get their get together with like get it together with the um, PCI ports. The M.2 the... drives. Yeah, yeah, for the um, for the external for the external SSDs and give us a list of acceptable. You know what I mean? Like, I almost wish they had just gone the proprietary route, like Microsoft did at this point, just because like at least Microsoft has them, right? Right. <laughs> so, yep. um, I don't personally care. It doesn't really affect me. I only ever really have time to play one game at a time, anyways. So I just keep a rolling list on my mm-hmm. on my um, hard drive and delete what I'm not playing. But uh, but for people, you know, maybe someday, maybe sometime in my life, I'm going to want it. So, like, get on with it. <laughs> and uh, one of those bugs that they fixed is that if you do have a PlayStation 4 game installed on the external drive and it's connected to your PlayStation 5 and it goes into rest mode, it will automatically update those games. So that's kind of cool. And knowing that that has been fixed, with the one use case that I have for this update is I kind of wish I had an external solid state drive that I could store all of my PlayStation 4 multiplayer games on. It would be really cool to have a fully patched and updated version of Fallout 76, Monster Hunter Worlds, uh, and The Division 2 all like ready to go at any time. Because those aren't sure. games that I'm always playing, but when friends want to play them, I want to be able to jump in and not have to reinstall them again. And so that yeah. would be kind of cool. Just to have like an external drive with all those games on it ready to go. But they're expensive, and I don't want to spend money on that because it's not really a thing. Yeah. So. 
Uh, and, what other features did sure. they add in this So um, batch? another big social feature was this ability called um, cross. Well, share play. It's now cross generation. Mm-hmm. And what share play is, it lets somebody else control your game. So their controller is making changes affecting your TV. So you can let other friends play. It's like pass the controller to a friend right. through the internet. And now it's cross platform or cross generation. Sorry, between PS5 and PS4. It's a feature I've never really used before, ever. So I don't really know. For those of you that do, uh, there you go. Now you can play with your, you can play PlayStation Five games if you don't own a PS Five. If your friends will let them share their game with you, so you can't. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's also some. They've tweaked the game base UI feature now. You can uh, switch between parties and friends. That's a godsend. I love it. I don't like how they had it before with the parties up at the top. And then you just scroll down to get to your friends list. That was annoying. Now you can yeah. just scroll over and see your friends. So that's a little easier. Um, you can disable game chat to it or adjust players' volumes. This is huge. I played Destruction All Stars at launch, and you could not mute anyone else's mics. And because there's a microphone built into the controller, everyone has a mic. And it was annoying. And it was constant screaming or music or cussing or like stuff you don't want to hear. And it was uh-huh. it was really really bad that you that you couldn't like change that so now you can <laughs> so that's pretty cool. it always reminds me of my fallout 76 story when i was playing on beta and the guy was like what play a fall oh yeah <laughs> i'm cracking up oh man uh, yep. all right there's a game update pre-downloads once it's enabled by developers title updates for games can will pre-download to your console if the automatic updates settings is enabled and your console is on or in rest mode that's pretty cool because you don't have everybody trying to download the update at once so it kind of alleviates the servers but that's up to the developers to implement our, our yeah. consoles can now do it um there's uh, you can hide games from your game library now if you want and you have a little toggle to show or not show hidden games uh, there's a new trophy settings and stat screen, which I was extremely excited for because I thought this was like a tease to show more complex like comparisons between friends and like no, all it is is like a tiny little splash screen that shows you like a snapshot of your trophies. wasn't really exciting, so there's Ooh. that. Yeah, uh, and there's doing a bunch of slew of stuff with the phone app as well. You can like uninstall and manage your storage on on your phone, but those updates have not been live yet they just promised that so that's it cool. anything cool about the that's ps5 it. update for you that you cared about nah, <laughs> nah. it was fine <laughs> there were some other features they, uh go ahead yeah i was gonna say that they were they, they like turned on the hdmi yeah features yep. where you can and i don't i don't like that <laughs> i don't want to accidentally turn my tv off if i want my playstation 4 i was the day it came out i was literally running a i was uh, running that macro for persona to do that thing to farm mm-hmm. experience for me uh and i was like nah, i don't want to accidentally turn this off by turning off my tv so it was like a reminder that sometimes i want to re- like remote play and i don't want it to turn my tv on um when i'm remote play you know what i mean if i want to remote play for my room for my ps4 and my kid and my wife are in the living room my kid's gonna go berserk if i like cut that on and then it turns the tv on as well like so i just keep it all keep yeah. it all separated keep yeah. them separated that's what it's, i said it's, you gotta keep it separated uh it acts like, like i can see where it would be convenient in some circumstances but it's inconvenient in enough circumstances that i say now nah, so there's an idea that that's kind of a bug it's supposed to be a one-way thing, uh, but oh, the way yeah. that it's implemented now, the PlayStation assumes it's the only device connected to your TV, and that's the way it works. Mm-hmm. It's like you turn on the PlayStation, TV comes on. You turn the TV on, the PlayStation comes on. With the mm-hmm. Xbox Series X, I will note that you can switch which one you want. Do you want the TV to turn the Xbox on, or do you want the Xbox to turn the TV on? So it's one All way. Right. You can say, Xbox, turn my TV on. So when I grab my Xbox controller, I turn it on, it turns the TV on for me. That's great. But when I turn my TV on to watch something on a Chromecast, none of my consoles should come on. But with the PlayStation, it does. And it's not inseparable, so that is annoying. So if a PlayStation is the only thing tied to your TV, then it's great. You can use that convenience. But I'm also experiencing... The PlayStation is the only thing tied to my TV, and I still don't want it turned on. Yeah, And, like, your TV also has that functionality as well. And I had to turn it off in my TV. It was on by default, and I had to turn that off on my TV as well. I'm like, argh. So I just don't. I, I'm an old school, you know. I turn my console on. I blow in the cartridge, oh. and then I turn and then I turn the TV on. <laughs> That's how it's done, right? Since the NES days, everyone blows on their discs, right? Am I the only one? You still do it wrong because you turn your console on first. You bad. You turn your TV on first so you can get the. Console I give you startup such a hand. hard time about that. Every single time, I <sighs> your voice is in my head, and every single time I go, "You gotta hear the console, sir." <laughs> 
the console startup sound. It is. It's so nostalgic. Have you ever heard a PlayStation 2 startup? It, it brings tears of joy to my soul. Tears of joy to my soul. Right. Like, I don't actually cry. It's just, like, internal. Like, ah. Oh. <laughs> All right. Moving anyway. on. We've got a couple more stories to hit real quick. The link um, for this one is broken. So, but the context is still good. So, you can read the next headline. Sure. I just want to remind our listeners, we're on our last two stories. We're probably going to blow through them really fast. So, if you have any thoughts, share. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Uh, all right, so PlayStation 5 is apparently selling very well. It is, despite the shortage. So I'm actually going to mm-hmm. read a little snippet here from Eurogamer uh, by Wesley Yinpool. The PlayStation 5 is the fastest-selling console in the U.S. history. According to market research group NPD, Sony's console is the fastest-selling ever in U.S. in both unit and dollar sales. That's lifetime sales with five months on the market. So that's just a record from release day, five months out, how much has sold. PlayStation 5 has sold 4.5 million units globally in 2020. In February, Sony said it was on track to sell over 7.6 PS5 units by March 35th, sorry, March 31st, 2021. It's a remarkable success for the supply-constrained PS5, which Sony launched amid the pandemic. Demand for the PS5 has heavily outstripped supply, and it remains out of stock at raft of retailers who have faced trouble with scalpers and bots. Yeah, I was going to say, how many of those, that's what I was going to say, how many of those units sold are comprised of scalpers at this point, you know? Well, that's what it does. So they only track, like, what what Sony has sold to the stores like out there. So it doesn't really matter right. where they go as far as this number is concerned. They've sold four and a half million units. That's it. Right. So there's four right, and a right. half millions and, out there. And, and you know, I get it. Like yeah. the, if scalpers are buying it, there's obviously still demand, but my point is like, and yes, Sony is still making money, but my point is from like a, Oh, this console is so popular. People are buying it so fast. Like how many of that, how many of those actual units are sitting on people's, you know, shell or sitting on scalpers shelves yep. waiting to be sold as opposed to mm-hmm. actually use consoles that people are actually getting joy out of which is why you make and sell a console in the first place um well they want to make yeah. money well yes but <laughs> <laughs> you hate me so much 7.6 I... million is the actual number march 31st for march 31st first man i can't say that anymore um so we're at 7.6 million units that is half of the total units of the wii u and the wii u was on the market for like four years so we're halfway there in five months crazy um so another note about the whole mpd number the nintendo switch continues to sell remarkably well too mpd's executive director matt piscatella tweeted to say nintendo switch was the best selling hardware platform in both units and dollars for the month of March. In the first quarter of the year, Nintendo Switch was the unit sales leader, while PlayStation 5 ranked first in hardware dollar sales. That's because the Switch is cheaper. Yep. So, mm-hmm. there you go. And there's some stuff about the projections in the future, but Sony is killing it. The PlayStation yep. 5 is a success. It's selling a lot. So. Yep. All right, last story is Resident Evil had another showcase for Village. Um, and the big news that came out of this was the... Um, I just saw your link is the same yep. as the last. Story. That's why I made that. That yeah. Yeah, I saw your face. Uh, the the biggest news from that is that they had like a playable demo that confirmed that the game will run at um, 4K 60 frames per second on the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, unless you turn ray tracing on, in which case it drops down to 45 frames per second, I believe. Yeah, the, that's really, uh, really cool. So, like, speaking of, I'm actually glad that you brought that up because the article I'm looking at from IGN doesn't mention that. So you oh, did, yeah. and that's great. Great talking point. So we noticed in the PlayStation 3 and now the PlayStation 4 and now the PlayStation 5 era, but anyway, before the PS5, everything targeted 30 frames per second, and it was, like, right. pushing the maximum graphics for 30 frames per second. Then we have these PS5s and Xbox Series Xs, which are really powerful, and now 60 F- FPS is, like, becoming the norm. It's the expected. It's the new standard, It's, yeah. like, what everyone really wants, and everyone's really loving that benefit. In fact, that's what PC Master Race was all about, was the, the 60 frames per second. So we have that now, and it's this is really cool that we're going to get 4K with ray tracing, which is very demanding on the hardware, mm-hmm. but they're targeting 45 FPS. This is important, because if you have variable refresh rate turned on, which PlayStation 5 hasn't yeah. implemented yet... But if you do, it's going to feel like 60, even though it's really not. And that's mm-hmm. awesome because that means they're going to be pushing the graphical limitations. And this is kind of setting a precedent and maybe a standard. Like maybe future on, like we don't go below 45. That would be amazing. I don't want to see 
us go back to 30 frames per second just to get like yeah. the craziest gri- visuals you can possibly imagine. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know. This is a really cool. Like when I saw that, I was like, huh, 45 FPS. I hope that's the new norm. I hope that's as low as we right. get this whole generation. So yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it depends. Yeah. It was, so we'll have to see how like much of the ray tracing adds to, to the graphical fidelity, but, um, Oh, ray tracing is a gorgeous, like destruction oh, all stars, like, uh, like, like floored it. me. I was like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. I, I guarantee you that that's gonna that's going to be the uh, trumpet call of the PC master race going forward. Is oh, uh, we'll be able to have ray trace on Resident Evil and 60 frames per second and 4K yeah. all at once. So we'll be able to have all of their cakes uh, and eat all of their cakes. Whereas we'll be like, but I go down to 45. But again, I paid 500 dollars for my PlayStation 5, not 5,000 yeah. dollars for my PC. So yep. we're good. Um, cool, awesome. Well, that's all of our news stories. So I don't believe we have anybody in the chat or anything in the chat. So we can wrap up there. And uh, termite, if listeners who are listeners, watchers, viewers, people who are watching us later want to you know are. where they can find us live, then tell them where they can hit those subscribe buttons to be made aware. To be caught up with us when we go live, go to twitch.tv slash 80bitpodsmash 80bitpodsmash so you can subscribe to us there and you'll catch us live, interact with us in chat with our gameplay live streams at, on Wednesdays at 8 and our new show right here, Monday night at 8. Also go to 80bitpodsmash.com that's our landing website with links to all of our social media outlets and our podcast platforms and check us out. Oh, subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform that you choose and make sure you're caught up on our shows because we have a really great great episode about strategy guides and what happened as we mentioned earlier in this show so go check us out and follow us on those socials like us like this video and subscribe to our feeds word all right have a good week y'all see you next week